This is a Bramble Jam podcast. It's Monday, October 12th. I've got a great idea. Take the day off. Hey, oh, a little cheese ball maraca. Yes, you know the kind. Uh, I saw cheese ball maraca live. Mm. How were they? Worst Mardi Gras I've ever had. <laughs> What's Just the best terrible. Mardi Gras you've ever had? Oh, 2012, no question. No, I was mm. there. Yeah, Stinks and Stones were there. Stinks and Stones, they uh, they broke bones, baby. <laughs> they did. Um, hi, everybody. Hello. Happy uh, Monday. Mm. Happy Monday. You got a case of the Mondays? I know how to fix it. How? Take the day off. And we have a good, good reason. Yeah, we, uh, we always have a good reason, but today yes. is, is special. Today, I think, is a group of people who uh, are known for not taking days off, are known for working through the muck. The Meyer. Wow. I don't, I don't know what today. We're going to get to that in just okay, a second. Good. Uh, good, good. But before we do, Dan, you were telling me over the weekend we got together, yeah. uh, play a little, a little ball. Hoop, a little hoops. A little hoops. And you shot uh, basketball before. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you were telling me about just how everything's turning around Dude, for you. Turn around. My clothes fit better because of Bramble Jam Plus. Wow. It's crazy. What do you do to do that? I, nothing. I just I went to BrambleJamPlus.com, signed up for a year of ad-free podcasting. So for an entire year, every Bramble Jam podcast, there's so many great ones. Interesting. All ad free. All of a sudden, my clothes started to fit better. Hey, what's your favorite Bramble Jam podcast? If mm, you don't mind me asking. That's Can a tough I ask one. that question? The Bramble Jam. <laughs> the NBA pod? Yeah, it's funny because I love the NBA and I love podcasts. I love and this game. The NBA final started and there was just no episodes yeah. of Bramble Jam. Well, and it's it was, just like at that point, it you was, know what's happening. <laughs> it it right? seems like peak time for NBA talk uh-huh. and I can't find it. Uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. That's uh, that's isn't that when life gives you lemons, you find a better NBA podcast. That's what I thought. That's the that's the old yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found saying. another one. It's pretty yeah. good. Crammy's uh, Crammy Crandall's. <laughs> Crammy Crandall's. Son of a B. Yeah, Crammy Crandall's <laughs> NBA jam is what he calls it. Ooh. He uses all the same I sound hate bits. hate him. You. Yeah. I hate Crammy. Crammy. Um, so thank you for joining Bramble Jam Plus. If you haven't already, uh, w- thank you in the future for when you finally, finally get your jump life on around. Board. Um, boy, it is an exciting day today, everybody. Happy Farmer's Day. Farmer's Day. Happy Farmer's Day. You might be wondering to yourself, self, I'm not a farmer. I, I, I don't even like being outdoors. Yeah. How could I possibly take the day off? and still have any sense of credibility with my friends and family. And I would say this. Uh, <laughs> You're worried about credibility with your friends and yeah, family. Right I, I, I would say this. Um, if you haven't written letters to your local farmers to thank them for what they've been doing, especially during this trying time, still providing us with the milk, the eggs, et cetera, Oh, you got a day full yeah. because f- farmers are underappreciated and they're overworked. Do you know that there used to be no- over 90% farmers in our country? Wow. Like 96% farmers. And then over the course of about 125 years, by 1900, it died out to like 25%. And then after the Great Depression, we were in like the single digit percentile. Like no one's a farmer anymore. And that's why they're overworked. That's why they're it's overworked. Because there's not nearly as many of them as there used to be. So us non-farmers need to take the day off to think, look, Here's the thing. You, Brain didn't say it in the intro. Right. Farmers aren't going to take the day off. They, they are. Chickens they need to be fed. Yeah. You know, animal sheep need to be herded. Yeah. <laughs> you said you it. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> sheep. Sheeps is not plural. It's Sheeps. just sheep. Sheep need to be herded. Things need, the cows need to be milked. We can do them a solid How? by taking the day off to respect and venerate the plow. Uh, wow. Venerate the plows. That's a very famous um, phrase from U.S. History. So I was talking to uh, my f- personal favorite farmer. I I kind of I do a weekly run around with my favorite farmer. She's You're talking fa- to him. How is that not a podcast? Uh, I'm all in on Brand's weekly roundup with his favorite <laughs> farmer. Just trying to get like a you know uh, encourage them to kind of get the scuttlebutt on what's going on in the farming uh, community. Uh, I was talking to farmer Jameson. And uh, James E, uh, as I like to call him, James E. Uh, he uh, he. How was do you spell that? Jameson, or Jamie? Jamie. James. 
J A I M E E uh, apostrophe uh, slash boy E. e. Okay, got it. Um, and he was telling me about just like uh, he just feels overwhelmed, and he was uh, you know doing some stuff with uh, ducks. And one of the ducks the other day running away from him, just looking behind him, just saying, Dan knows about Farmer's Day. Dan knows about Farmer's Day. He didn't know what it meant. He felt like he would pass it along to me. This and I am now hard yes. New York accent. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, and I decided I would pass it along to you. Is that duck correct? You know what? It's weird because the duck is correct, but I'm still concerned that the duck is talking and Jamie's just letting it fly. No, we're not knowing about it on the news or anything. It seems like something that would make Jamie change. doesn't want the Jamie's keeping it quiet. He does, well, he doesn't. He doesn't. We're like letting it. the cat out of the bag here on the pot. We're letting the duck out of the pond here. Well, on the I podcast. didn't tell you Jameson's last name. Oh, <laughs> you, you call him Jamie. I do. Jamie. Uh, Yeah. National Farmer Day dates all the way back to the most famous cow, Jingles the Cow. You remember Jingles the Cow? I do. Yeah. Farmer Jess would put not cowbells on his cows, but would put jingle bells on his cows. And he ran a Christmas cow farm. And this is early. Christmas cow farm. I know. You'd ride up your alley. I am in. I love milk. I love Christmas. What's not to love? Yeah. And so in the mornings, when the cows would start to stir and wake up and start to murr, as they walked around, you would hear them jingle all around. Now, uh, one morning in, in a cri- on a crisp October day in mm-hmm. 1902, uh, Farmer Jess gets up and he hears that uh, only one cow is jingling. Uh-oh. That's it. The rest of the cows are not jingling. Uh-oh. Um, so he goes down to the farm. He's worried. And somehow, with hooves attached, Jingles has removed all of the jingle bells off of all the other cows and attached to the, them to herself. And she is just one massive, <laughs> giant bovine with just, and, and she just, she's she's coming in with bells. What on. did it sound like? It was a lot of jingling yeah. bells. Was, but but mono, we're, we're monotone, right? Yeah. He could tell it was just one walking cow. So that's where Farmer's Day came from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Farmer <laughs> just sees this and it's like, wow, this, th- people need to know about these things. They need to know about the capability of cows, even without opposable thumbs, they've got to know about them. And so uh, he petitioned uh, for, for the Guinness World Record to come down and take a look at Jingles the Cow. They said no, and it was ridiculous, but they did offer him uh, a day and it was National Farmer's Day. And since then we've been celebrating it. Uh, interesting. Uh, October 12th, uh, actually, historically, uh, Farmer just died of smallpox is the <laughs> end of the traditional harvesting period. And so National Farmers Day marks the beginning of uh, the period of the year where farmers can begin to participate in more activities outside of just farming. Their their year maybe begins oh, to slow yeah, down yeah, cause the crops uh, a little bit. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Um, and so also additionally, every three years, the harvest moon will fall on, uh, fall in early October proceeding and leading up to National Farmers Day on the 12th. Uh, and so just as it did this year. Yeah. And so uh, the when you see that harvest moon, it is your cue to begin to thank your lucky stars that there's farmers out there uh, and uh, be happy that October 12th is coming up because that means the farmers uh, can begin to maybe enjoy life a little bit. Things begin to slow down yeah. just a touch. Yeah, 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 There's three or four months in there where the farmers aren't growing as many crops. That's exactly, for that's exactly, that, right, of course. Not nearly as much to do. Yes. That's wow. Exactly right. So there you go. And that's why... Uh, so farmers will be taking the day off maybe. They they Well, maybe not the full day, but yeah, at yeah, least yeah. part of the yeah, day. And I'm thankful, yeah, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for it. Um, enjoy your families today, farmers. Absolutely. Um, what are, Could you be a farmer, Dan, you think? No. No, I could not be a farmer. Well, you and I have very similar beliefs about the outdoors. I, I mean, I can play golf outside just fine. Uh, I used to play tennis, if you can believe it. Um, I'm not going outside otherwise, unless I, I have to. I like, want to make this. Took my kids to yeah. the zoo, enjoyed my time at the zoo because my kids loved every second of it. But personally, it's a no for me. When I go buy houses, you know, far, farm houses that are really big, they got all that land. Yeah. And I'm like, man, they're living the good life. And then I remember all the work that they've had oh. to do to get that good life. And to me, it is not worth it. The risk reward there is not 
uh, not there. It just doesn't compute in my mind. I've been on enough mission trips where you know you're forced to do labor for the sake of the good news. I don't. Uh, first of all, I want to <laughs> whoever out there said construction is going to be the way in which people yeah. come to know Jesus. Disagree. Uh, gonna, I, I, I I I almost walked away many times. We're gonna uh, paint a fence. Yeah, and again. then tell you about no, like just stop it. I I, I it's awful. I hate being outside. Of, I hate doing stuff with my hands. Um, but to those of you that are out there that are doing the good work, thank you uh, for doing that. Man, that uh, came off well. Yeah, you're I making us so. all look bad, yeah. though. The, the, those of us simpletons that uh, yeah. see see the, the grass uh, and it needs to be mowed and we pay someone to do it, uh, well, you're making us look bad. That's me. <laughs> They're guil- guilty here. Uh, you know, I got I got $20. Might as well. Yeah. Um, hey, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We asked you all uh, on Friday whether or not farmers markets, farmers markets, that's yeah. dope, yeah? Yeah, farmers markets. Farmers markets are fun or if they're overhyped. Ooh. Do you enjoy the farmers market or do you go there and just feel a little bit, mm, yeah, that's all the hubbub we're about. We're, we're. We'll get to that in just a second. We'll be right back here on Take the Day Off. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Hey, Welcome back. It was is a long first segment. It was. We were it really was. getting in it about it, the, the farmers. Well, yes. Well, the farmers aren't going to get into it themselves. They're too busy working. That's right. Uh, we asked you uh, on Friday about farmers markets, your opinion of them. Dan, I want to know, what is your opinion on the farmers market? This is tough because I think we've already explained very, like for me, I'd much rather just go to a grocery store with climate control, maybe a fountain drink and pick, what, pick out what they have. However... Um, as an event to do with toddlers who have a lot of energy, the farmer's market in Greenville, South Carolina, is great because it's on Main Street. They shut down, uh, you know, a few blocks of traffic. Uh, it's organized. And fr- from a, a like what you get, it saves you money over going to like a Whole Foods or like a fresh market or something like that. And so going my kids, the source. you get the stack of bread. Oh. My kids just sit there and eat stack of bread as they walk down Main Street my wife loves it because she loves the fresh produce and going to the farmer's market. Uh, the, the weather's a little cooler. There's a lot to like. It's not for me, but there's a lot to like in farmer's markets. And so I, I want to I highlight that because I would never personally go. But when I go, I'm never disappointed. Yeah, I yeah. like the free samples. <laughs> I don't uh, do that as much during the COVID. No, and yeah. that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I is. mean, obviously, you know, you got to do what you got to do, but I I like free samples. And so, uh, and lots of times, you know, I, I, I'm rarely going to spend $20 on uh, a box of eggs, but, uh, but uh, you know, I feel good supporting the local, uh, you know, people that are doing their thing. I feel good about that. Yeah. You know, it's going straight to their pocket. It's tough because I do like... There's a natural instinct at the farmer's market that's like, ooh, what can I try? Like, what can I, you right. know, and that that whole aspect has changed. Like, yeah. I can't, and my kids don't know that it's changed. And right. so they just want to get their little phalanges on just whatever right. they can. They can just like get, get them and, you know, put them in there as right. much as they can. Right. I, yeah, I do. I enjoy it like once a year. It's not, yeah. I'm not the person, we're not waking up every Saturday morning. We go, we go um, now that it's open back up and it's open air and they don't let a lot of people in. That is one of the few things we do on a regular, we go about every Saturday. Wow. True story. Uh, well, let's see what our uh, wonderful uh, Bramble Gym Plus members, the Double Deckers, if you will, have to say about it. Um, uh, Rena thinks they're amazing. She's all about it. She's all about the uh, the farmer's market. And Ashley says that they're fun. Coffee, mini donuts, enjoy the weather, even if you buy nothing. It is, you know, it's 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 like uh, it's like a it's like going to the mall, but like uh, less worse. Yeah, you know what I mean? Less worse. Yeah. Uh, Alonzo said they're an amazing bargain compared to what produce uh, goes for at the supermarket, especially right. Whole Foods. I look forward to not being afraid to handle cash so I can go back to one. Alonzo, at our farmer's market, it's all like I have a credit card that's a tap to pay. I literally, there is, it's, it's contactless aside from whenever they put the produce on the table. We pick it up, we take it with us. It's fantastic. And I will say this. A lot of people who are saying it's way cheaper live in places that are way expensive. Like yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. it's less expensive than Whole Foods here for sure in South Carolina, but it's it's not less expensive than going to Publix. Right. 
You're going to pay more, but you're getting organic, fresh stuff. There's some great farms in South Carolina. Peach season. Now it's apple season. Yeah. A lot to luck, yeah. for sure. Uh, Genevieve says they're overhyped. The only farmer's markets that have been in my area uh, never have any food. They're Whoa. just crafts and jewelry. Ugh. Um, now, I, I would love to visit the ones that have actual food. You want to talk about my personal hill? Yeah. A hot day. We have that over here. Uh, we have that at uh, the Indie Craft yeah. Parade. A hot day here. walking through crowded Main Street with just rows and rows of booths of crafts. Yeah. That is my personal hill. Yeah. I just don't want any part of that experience. And I'm sorry, craft people. It's just not for me. Yeah. It's yeah. the worst. Yeah. Uh, Nicole mm -hmm. says overhyped. I live in the country and I grow my own. Don't need them. Uh, good for you, Nicole. Hey, take the day off, Nicole. Take the Take day the off. Take the day off, Nicole. That's exactly Dawn right. Dawn Strickland says way overhyped. Vegetables suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she says. Oh, I agree. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily disagree. They do yeah, suck. Yeah. Uh, Sarah says overhyped. Every time I go to a quote unquote farmer's market, there are one to two booths from actual farmers. The rest are vendors with candles, jewelry, and whatnot. I came here for produce people, not your overpriced bracelet. With you 100%, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Give me the food. Give me the the samples uh and take your candles and go home that's what i always say wow take do you say that to the vendors? i do i say take your candles and go home man that's bold that's a bold move uh molly says uh the best farmers markets are the one where amish have stands with their baked goods i think we can all agree that the amish make some pretty darn good baked goods we can agree on that right dan oh 100 percent. they it's just it's made with more love it's just wonderful. Um, back, I, I used to, I worked in a camp in Georgia for a couple of years, and there was an Amish bakery uh, in town that was just delightful. So if you can ever uh, uh, stumble upon yeah, one of those, I you're think, in good shape. Yeah, I think the key is finding the local the local goodies and not having to hunt too far. That's right. If you're just in a new town, I think a farmer's market's tough because you don't know where that good stuff is. But like, if you know in Greenville where to go get the cinnamon chip bread, where to go get the stecker bread, right. the apples, the peaches, the produce. It's pretty, you can do it all in under an hour and you're getting stuff for relatively cheap. You're supporting local people. That's what Farmer's Day is really all about. That's exactly right. That's exactly mm. right. Um, and I just want to, uh, Paige says that uh, Farmer's Markets are a gift of God. Wow, Paige. It's a goal of mine to visit different Farmer's Markets around Texas every time I travel. Uh, dream, dream big, Paige. Dream, dream big. big. Maybe Paige. you'll get to all of them one day. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you will. Maybe you will. Mm. Uh, I think we can all agree the key to a farmer's market is it has to be about the farmers. That's right. We're not. If you want to do a craft thing, you sh it shouldn't be a farmer's market. It should be a craft yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and so I think we can all agree on that. That's the big takeaway here. If your local uh, farmers market is about the farmers, is about the produce, is about the stuff that you can buy uh, direct from the source that's when they're uh, a-okay here. If they're all about the bracelets and the candles and the, and the, and the hey, look at my painting, uh, get out of here with that. Don't need it. Hey, uh, here's a question uh, for tomorrow, Dan. Are you ready about, the, ready. Are you ready about this one? Uh, do you think that the color of an M&M changes its taste? I have to be honest. We've been doing this now for what seems like an eternity. <laughs> this is the worst question we've ever had. Do you think that the, the color of an m and changes its taste we're going to get to if that anyone says yes they're fired we're going to dive into that tomorrow right. try to wait till tomorrow and there's a chance that i get fired uh <laughs> we're going to leave you with the baja coup of the day until uh tomorrow we hope you have a wonderful day you should go ahead and take, take this take, take, take that day off everybody